Rub up your engines! Fountain says, opinion on the 1998 4.6 Mercury Grand Marquee LS. It's a great grandpa car. Those are grandpa cars. And those engines could run freaking forever. You know, on the highway they weren't that bad. You could get 20 something miles a gallon if you drove conservatively. Gas hoggy in town, but you know, I got old guys that still drive around. Every once in a while I get some hipster that they like them and so they buy a used one and have me fix it up and they drive around in them. And they like the idea of driving around a grandpa car because hipsters like doing weird stuff. So, uh, you know, if it was taken care of, it's old now, but they could still last and parts are readily available. It's not, not like you can't get parts for the things. Cody J says, Scotty, what do you think of a 2010 Hyundai Accent Blue with a 5-speed manual and 78,000 miles on it for 3500 Okay, I'm not a Korean car fan, as I said all the time, but it's got a 5-speed manual with only 78,000 miles for 3500 bucks. Why not? It could be a decent car that lasts for years. You know, I've seen some of those engines go two, three hundred thousand miles if you took care of it and if it had a standard transmission in it. Doesn't sound like a bad deal, but believe me, I've been doing this for 51 years. Don't trust anybody. Always pay a mechanic to check it out because we can tell it's been wrecked, flooded, or stolen in 20 minutes. And most mechanics charge anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks to check it out. It's worth doing it if you want to have peace of mind. I mean, it's only a smart thing to do. Cesar Santos says, hey, there's Scotty. I got a 2010 Renault that whines in fifth gear only. What could be the problem? Well, if you can drive any speed in fourth gear, third gear, but then when you go into fifth gear, it whines. It means that fifth gear is going out. Uh, gears are on bearings, and when the bearings wear, they start to whine. Like when your wheel bearings go, they start and then you got to replace them. Well, replacing the fifth gear on a transmission, <laughs> standard transmission, you got to pull it and take it completely apart. It's like a Swiss watch. My advice, just live with it. <laughs> and if it gets loud, don't use fifth gear. Use fourth gear. And you get a little bit worse gas mileage, but then at least it won't be wearing the fifth gear. And then when it does break, you can't drive it at all. I've had a lot of customers in the past with standard transmissions, fifth gear started to go out. I said, don't use them. Sometimes four or five years later, they're still working. But if they don't listen and they use the fifth gear, eventually it pops out, breaks, and pieces fly, and that's the end of the transmission. Georgia says, Scotty, what do you think of Lancia? Okay, it's an Italian car. That pretty much says it all. Fiats are known as fix it again, Tony. Italians make zippy, cute looking, sexy cars. There's no arguing that. But they all tend to fall apart as they age. And the Lancia is no different. You can get much better, more reliable, fun to drive cars if you buy something Japanese. The Italian stuff, yeah, it's zippy, it goes around. I remember watching one of the Top Gear shows where they had an Alfa Romeo and versus a Mazda Miata. And yeah, the Alfa's fast, but it costs so much more and it'll fall apart that you're better off driving a Miata around than you are driving a stupid Alfa. And Lancia is an Italian company too, so, you know, it doesn't impress me. I'd, I'd never, and here in the United States, you can't get parts for them. They're so expensive and hard to get, unless you're one of those nuts that wants to drive around in a goofy Italian car and you don't mind having a Toyota that you drive every day and use that as a toy, I wouldn't advise buying one. <laughs> Real Carlos says, Scotty, what's your opinion on NASCAR? Is it dead? It's not dead, but it's dying. I did a shoot a couple years ago at Charlotte at the Speedway there, and I noticed that grandstands, they looked weird, and I looked closely, and they had like painted them colors like baseball caps. So it looked like people were sitting there when they weren't. I asked the guys, you know, what's going on here? And the guy said, hey, they had to tear out like 30,000 seats because nobody ever bought them anymore. And it looked bad. Everybody gets greedy. You know, the motel owners all, when they were racing, raised their rates. Everybody got greedy, wanted more money. I got to say, uh, Car racing in the United States is kind of a dying sport. When I was a kid, it was big. Everybody messed with their cars. Now the young kids don't care about it. Millennials don't care about that stuff. And eventually, they're either going to run out of money or they'll die off and there won't be anybody left to watch the stuff. It's kind of like baseball. Baseball's a dying sport, too. You look at the games on TV, the outer outfield stands are practically completely empty, you know, and uh, there's a lot of dying sports going out there. They still go by TV ratings and stuff for the advertisers in there, but I saw a lot of the advertisers were pulling out of NASCAR because they wanted too much money and they felt, hey, we're not getting anything out of it. So a lot of those things are dying down. Our race driving in the United States is pretty much a dying sport. It has been going downhill for quite some time. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.